Extend and Beyond is an important aspect of generating a vibrant community. It's often the place where we evolve, innovate, and rethink who we are, what we're doing, and why. In the first talk of our last track, Michael Paskowitz introduces a novel way for us to perceive and harness the strengths of our team, possibly reinventing performance management at the same time. Hi, I'm Michael, and I am a video game addict. Some of my earliest memories are playing Pac-Man with my mom in our basement on an Atari 2600. We used to play so much that our hands would cramp into claws. <clears throat> we called the condition Pac-Man hands. When the pandemic shut everything down, I was able to maintain some level of social connection with my friends by meeting them in virtual worlds where we would battle monsters and explore dungeons while catching up and having a beer. <laughs> As a parent, I have a complicated relationship with video games and my children. On the one hand, video games can teach so many important lessons. Grit, some games will beat you down mercilessly making you try to figure out just the correct combination of runs, ducks, and jumps to clear a level. Look at you, Super Mario Brothers. <clears throat> Minecraft, my favorite game that I've never actually played, <laughs> teaches the basics of coding and three-dimensional design. My children have created vast worlds in Minecraft that never cease to amaze me in their complexity and construction. But at the same time, Put down the controllers and go outside. So I knew I wanted this talk to be about video games, but how? Then it hit me. There's a particular type of game called the role-playing game, or the RPG, where if you want to play with a whole bunch of people, tch, wait, that's not right. There we go. <laughs> if you want to play with a whole bunch of people, especially your friends during a pandemic where you're not supposed to actually go out and interact with people. The massively multiplayer online role-playing game. That's MMORPGs. <laughs> you may have heard of some of these. World of Warcraft is probably the most popular one in the last two decades. But there are plenty of others. RPGs are all about building teams and balancing out people's strengths and weaknesses. They can help you build teams in the real world. They help me better understand office dynamics. They help me design better performance reviews. So grab your controllers, or if you're hardcore, your mouse and your keyboard, high five, <laughs> and let's press play. For this to work, we're going to need to have a crash course in the different classes you can play in a role playing game. A class is kind of like your job. So the names of these are going to change depending on the game you're playing, but they all fall into one of three archetypes or categories. The healer, the damage dealer, and the tank. We're going to start with the damage dealer. This is your wizard, your archer, your super cool girl with the super cool knives. They're really good at hurting bad guys, but they're not very good at taking damage themselves. That's why you have the tank. Tanks are characters with lots of armor, or lots of muscles, or lots of armor and lots of muscles. <laughs> That one's a giant cow. Their job is to jump in front of the bad guys and distract them so the damage dealers can do their damage without being damaged themselves. Oftentimes, tanks are the leaders of the party. The good ones understand the mechanics of the game. The better ones understand the jobs of their teammates and can coach them through encounters. But sometimes, actually most times, the bad guys are much stronger than the tanks. That's why you have healers. The healer takes care of the group. They heal damage from the bad guys. If there's a gigantic spider and you get poisoned by that spider, it's generally the healer that's going to remove that poison from you. All right, now we're all caught up. <laughs> so while these archetypes are present in games, you also see them in real life. Your damage dealers, think about your go-to employees for getting things done. They're the creator of things, the data entry whiz, the report guru, you know, 
productive. A lot of us start off our careers in the damage dealer role. Tanks, they interact with the outside world, often shielding the team. Think about that employee that immediately jumps in and answers an angry email, diffusing the situation. That might be your tank. A lot of managers are tanks, but that's not a role that's exclusive to managers. In fact, many managers start off in the role of damage dealer, then get moved into a position that has to tank, but without the experience or the training necessary to take care of the rest of the team. Fortunately, we have healers. This is arguably the hardest role to play in games. This is often the hardest role to play in life. The healers are those people that know when something isn't right on the team and works to correct it. They can read a situation, know what's wrong, and instantly know what steps to take to correct that. Think about the person on your team that immediately recognizes when you're having a bad day and checks in with you. That might be your healer. So what next? What role do you normally play? Think about your teammates. What role do they normally play? Is your team balanced? If not, what's missing? If you're a manager, do knowing these roles make you better as a manager? Some of you might be sitting here thinking, well, I do all of those things. And that's true. We all have to play these roles sometimes. But if you're a manager and think that, this might be a good opportunity to look at some empowerment for your team or maybe some professional development opportunities. We just got done their performance review process. If you're a staff member, the mere mention of PMP may fill you with a baseline level of dread. But does it have to? What does a performance review look like that incorporates these elements? Turns out, I can show you, because based on this talk, I decided to reimagine the way I conduct performance reviews. Here's an example of an employee character sheet created <laughs> to supplement UMBC standard forms. Supplement. <laughs> Each of the characters in our office combines the skills of the person involved and a little bit of the role that they generally tend to play. This was such a fantastic exercise. As a manager, it made me have to step back and really assess the dynamics of my office and the different strengths of the people in it. We also have a section for weaknesses. It's also a good exercise because it allowed for some self-reflection and some open discussion of shortcomings. This is not something you do without a team that doesn't have a significant baseline level of trust. All of this allowed me to create goals with my employees that both catered to their strengths and a few that pushed them to the edge of their comfort zones. You don't have to go to these lengths to benefit from this. But what can you do in your performance review process to empower your employees instead of making them feel nervous? When I arrive at work every morning, I feel confident in the team that's by my side. I have an operations manager. She's our group's tank. She's a paladin. That's a warrior that swears to an oath to uphold justice and righteousness. You do not want to be on the wrong team if you send over a bad invoice. My business manager is a wizard of the School of Divination. Diviners are powerful mages who use their extensive knowledge of the past to both shape and predict the present and the future. Our IT specialist is a master artificer. Artificers don't wield magic, but they use the power of invention to unlock the capabilities and objects. Our administrative assistant is the office shaman. Shamans are healers that draw on the power of spirits and animals as a source of their power. If you can't tell, her spirit animal is a cat. <laughs> Finally, our events coordinator is a necromancer for no other reason, but it makes her happy. <laughs> so where to go from here? Reframe your office. Acknowledge people's strengths without judgment. Celebrate the diversity of skills in your office. And remember, every role is important. Everyone is a hero.